Hey, good morning. Mike Lalonde here from the New York State Department of Transportation. I'm a service and repair technician with a lot of years experience. And I want to share a little video with you today on the maintenance of an air and snowblower, the one we use here around the shop. As walk behind snowblowers go, this is a rather large one. So uh, I'm going to be flipping the machine over and showing you from the transmission uh, adjustments and, and the items to look at underneath there. I like to work from the bottom up when I'm doing maintenance and, prep and seasonal prep for these. Um, this snowblower has a, uh, a wet cell battery in it, which most machines don't have. And we remove that for the purpose of the video. So anytime you flip over a machine that has a wet cell battery, obviously you got to take the battery out. We can't have the electrolyte flowing all over. Also, if you're going to flip your machine over, you want the fuel tank to be about less than half so it doesn't pour out when we flip it up. And, and these machines are made to be flipped up to, for maintenance. So I got about a third of a tank of fuel there, so I'm going to spin this around. Okay, and for the purposes of our video, I've already removed the, uh, the, uh, the belly pan for this, so you can get into the mechanicals of the transmission. When you, when you flip your machine over, you want to look for the general condition of, of any of the items in here. And the eyes are, your eyes are your best tool that you have, so it's a matter of looking for loose fasteners, mechanisms that, are, that exceed, seem excessively worn, you see, you'll see the chain here. Okay, these chains typically on a snowblower don't have a ton of, of, of play in them. So you can see right there what, what is about typical. And that's what you're looking for. This isn't like a bicycle chain. Other than that, um, there's not a lot going on here. This is the drive wheel, okay? That contacts this drive plate. That's engaged. Excuse me. That's engaged with your, with your drive handle clutch up here. So you want to check the clearance between, well you want to look at, the first thing you want to do is look at the wheel. Make sure you'll find some of the older machines, you've got chunks out of it, or the rubber is real thin here on the edge. This one's in really good shape. And that's about typical of a good one. And that's got to maintain clearance between here and the drive wheel underneath. And you don't have to get too worried about the dimensions. Uh, about the thickness of a cardboard box, 16th of an inch or so is all the clearance you need. That adjustment, if you needed to make it, would be taken up here. Now, not all these machines are exactly the same. Um, the different machines do it different ways. So you would have to, you know, acquire the information, you know, a manual or the internet's a great resource for finding out specific specifics on your machine, so that adjustment on this machine is taken up here, okay? You want to examine the play in your bearings, your axle bearings here, and there's always, there's always going to be a slight amount. These are not super precision things. You'll notice here and here there are two loop points. And you can get, you don't need an elaborate gun like I have here, but Not all machines have these grease zerks on them. Some of the better machines do. A couple of pumps is normally all you need, once a year. All right, now that we have the machine uh, back up upright, we're gonna discuss uh, a couple of items here inside the bucket. This is the, generally the area known as the bucket. The first thing to note is the uh, gearbox, and this is the fill plug and the level check plug. So. Uh, this, I'm not going to do it, but I'll, you would pull that plug out of your machine and take a coat hanger or anything small down there and just make sure the oil level is, is up here close to the, to the edge. If it was low, you would just fill it up until it spilled out of here. Now, it, you're not going to find it low in your machine unless you see leaks of oil around these seals. This gearbox transfers power from the, from the engine and the transmission forward and it turns at a right angle and it powers these augers. The augers drive, put the snow into the impeller housing where it's blown out of the machine. You can see that this, the impeller on this side is locked to the internal shaft there that's supported on the end bearings here. 
This one, I have spins free, and I want to show you why. This is a blower auger shaft shear bowl. Now, I don't know if you can see it in the video. Well, this is a special bowl, and it has a groove here and a groove here. This is a low strength bowl, and it's set up that way so that if you're running your machine and you jam this auger into a large chunk of ice or something under the snow that you didn't see, um, something needs to give here. You don't want it to be this $100, $200, $300 gearbox and all the labor that it would take to change that out, and there's a lot of disassembly to do that. You want these bolts to break, and they're designed to break. They're shear bolts. And so they simply, there's one on either side, either side of the shaft. And it looks like a conventional cap screw, and this is a lock nut, so it won't vibrate off. And you want to make sure those bolts are, are intact on your machine. Some people break them and substitute a regular bolt in there, which is a really bad idea because, uh, like I said, if you jam this into something and these bolts don't give, something in here is going to give. So they come packaged like this, and you can get these, you know, in, in, in any big box store or auto parts store, they sell them uh, specifically. Uh, different machines take different size bowls, so it's not a universal thing. So it's a good idea to have a couple of these on hand. So if you break one during the season, uh, you can easily replace it. If the bolt shears off and the piece is stuck in there, you'll use something smaller than the bolt size, and these are 5 16 and just um, you know drive it out with a hammer and a punch. It should come right out. If your machine is maintained, they will come out. You can see also there's two grease points here, and I won't grab the grease gun again. And I just want to point these out to you because there's two here and there's two here. So because the drive shaft goes through the center of those, you want to keep that lubed up. Two, three shots of grease is all you're going to need. So that takes care of pretty much everything here. You want to check the shaft, make sure the internal bearings are tight. And uh, but that's other than that, we can uh, show the, the clearance adjustment on the on the bottom of the chute. You can see where those shiny bolts are. I just replaced that. That's a wear item, and that is governed. The height of that is governed by these these outside skates on the bucket. Okay, for the purposes of our demonstration, I'll show you these skates or shoes. They're properly called. They too are on a slotted. Uh, an arrangement here, and you back these cap screws off. And this is also a wear item. Now, on this machine, these are extra heavy duty, and, but all machines have them. You can get them replaced if they wear down. But what these do is support the weight of the machine. You want these right down on the, on the driveway, garage floor, wherever you're doing this. And these are cap screws or carriage bolts. And so you would lock both sides up the same way. Okay, now we got the, the transmission and we got the bucket adjustments done. I always like to work from the bottom up, so we're good. We got it back on its wheels, and uh, the next thing we're going to look at here is the belt and the drive. Uh, I've already removed the cover. This is a double pulley deal. This, the rear belt drives the the uh, tractor portion of the snowblower, and the forward belt drives the auger and the impeller that we looked at earlier. These two, they work off the crankshaft, obviously, of the engine. This is the traction clutch here. This one here. And what they, it's hard to see it, but that mechanism comes in and tightens the belt underneath there. This is a spring-loaded tensioner, so you want to feel the spring tension there. If there's no spring tension, the, the machine was probably slipping and you're going to have an issue. So you want to make sure that spring, which is hard to see, is intact. The belt is in good shape because any of these V-belts, a V-belt has grabs on the side of it, and it's shaped, they call it V-belts because it actually the sides of the belt are shaped like a V, so it'll grab the inside of the pulley, which is the uh, the reverse of that. And a belt that's in good shape will stick slightly above 
the edge of the pulley. Now, if you come over to the, the auger belt, which is on this machine, the little bit bigger one, that pulley, this belt is down below the edges of the pulley, and the take-up adjustment, which is this slotted adjustment right here, you move this, loosen that cap screw, and you can slide this, this pulley back and forth on that to, to uh, allow for belt wear. So this is all the way forward, and I still got a little more slop than I want there. This belt needs to be replaced. It'll probably get through the rest of this year, but um, I will put a new belt on this for next year. So that's really all you're looking for. Again, you want to look for any, anything that might be loose or broken. You want to look for any uh, fluids that shouldn't be in there. And, and down in here, you shouldn't, you'll find belt remains, but that should uh, be about the only thing you see in here. Okay, as we work our way up, we're going to get to our oil level here. And we're going to wipe the stick off because we had the machine flipped over and hopefully we didn't lose too much oil. And you can see that it's right up, right up full. Okay, we're going to have a quick look at the spark plug here. And this plug is, uh, is in pretty good shape. You will find deposits um, around the cone, the center cone, and in the inside. If the machine is running correctly, it'll be a dark brown color and maybe a little bit of, uh, a little bit of black. Okay, so we're done with our maintenance pretty much here at the top. We're gonna put the battery back in and uh, we'll run the, uh, the chute here. Okay, this, this machine, unlike most, has a, a motor drive for the auger or for, excuse me, for the chute. You wanna make sure it goes full range. That chute, I found works fine during the year if you just use something as simple as WD-40 on it. It works its way down to the to the two contact surfaces that it rotates on. Doesn't need to be a heavy oil, just a lightweight oil a couple times a year. And speaking of WD-40, if you spray it inside the bucket and inside of the chute during the year, um, that helps the snow eject. And it also lets the machine have a, a little bit of protection because you don't want to leave snow and salt and sand and that kind of stuff if you're out near the street with your machine. It, that'll cause, uh, it'll rust your <laughs> snowblower out just like it does your car or anything else. So that's, uh, if your machine doesn't have the electric drive, there'll be a crank handle of some sort. And it's just a simple shaft and there'll be a, a worm gear or a wire, uh, a wire sprocket that, that turns this mechanism. And it's nothing elaborate. <clears throat> some of the Lower grade machines have a cable system that turns the uh, chute, and those can be a little bit troublesome. So we hit on the major maintenance points here, again underneath the transmission and such, the auger drive and the shear bolts. And we come up and tended our fluid, our spark plug, and made sure our battery was up to snuff. Our air pressure in our tires is up, to, uh, is ready to go. So you should get another year's service out of the machine easily. And my name is, again, Mike Lalone, and thanks for joining us.